So this is my first video on astrophotography and even though there are quite a number of videos out there there's so much detail on them in each area which eventually you need to know I really struggled just beginning so this is the first setup or the first video I just wanted to show you the equipment and initial setup so slightly different here in that I've got mine mounted on a pier but you will need a tripod or a pier a tripod would be the first part of the setup you then need a mount and the mount is where most of the money is going and the reason for that is because inside the mount are two stepper motors so inside the mount we've got two stepper motors and that allows the telescope to automatically turn in two planes in two directions so i can open up the clutches if we can one-handed and you can see there that the telescope will move in either plane. So we'll talk about that more, like I say, in another video, but this is where most of your money is gonna go in amount. So even though you're getting into astrophotography and you think that actually the telescope is probably where the vast majority of the money will go, initially, it's actually in a good quality mount because without a good quality stable mount, you're not gonna be able to track stars. You're gonna be taking fairly long exposures and that mount has to track your target really perfectly, otherwise you're just gonna get blurring in the image. This particular mount is an older NEQ6, it's a Skywatcher mount, does a good job. I don't think they do this model anymore, I think it's been superseded now by the EQ6R Pro, uh, but there's lots of different options for your mount. So the next part is the camera itself. This here is an Alta 294C, it's a color camera, and it's a bit of a fancy one because it also does cooling. So when you're taking images in the evening, you can actually set the temperature uh, of the sensor to whatever you choose. I think it goes down to minus 40. I think I, I run it at minus 10. You don't have to go that that far and get a, get something like this. Uh, you get much cheaper versions that are not cooled. And of course, you can even run a DSLR there. And one thing that quite a few people um, sort of ask and certainly what I was asking when I first started is where does the camera go well the camera is ultimately taking place of the eyepiece so this is normally where the eyepiece would go and just while we're here you've got your focus uh, focuser there and focus lock which is part of the telescope I just thought I'd point that out so so far we've got the mount and we've got the camera so what's next? So of course here we've got the telescope and you could read for hours and watch videos for hours on which telescopes to purchase. And I'm not certainly recommending necessarily this one. I'm just saying that the one I've got here is a Skywatcher 200p. It's a Newtonian telescope. Now I can't quite see down the end of this. It's a bit high for me. But what happens is the light goes into the top there. It hits the mirror at the bottom. It reflects back up to this mirror here at the front and that you can just see there that that mirror is on an angle that one at the front which then obviously diverts the light into the camera so this is a newtonian telescope it's great for me this is 900 millimeters i'm using a reducer actually it's about one meter long um, I'm using a reducer on there, which means that it's 900 millimeters and it's an F 4.5. Um, high F rating because obviously that's got, I think it's about 10 inch diameter there. So it lets in lots and lots of light. So that's a Newtonian telescope, um, which uses mirrors. And of course you could, if you wanted, you could go for um, a refractor telescope, which uses lenses after quite a lot of research possibly is a little bit more beginner friendly um, there is quite a lot to go uh, wrong with these or a lot to adjust so one of the things that you could read about is collimation uh, making sure that it is actually all aligned the mirrors are all aligned so perhaps a little bit more work needed to run a Newtonian but that's the telescope so the next thing that's going to be needed is a guide scope so this here in itself is a mini telescope so that there is a mini telescope. Um, let's take the lens cap off. So you can see that is a mini telescope in its own right. And on the bottom is another camera. So this here is another camera. This silver part here is a, a guide camera. And what that's gonna do is once you've actually moved your mount into the correct position in the software, 
the guide camera or the guide scope is going to lock onto a star and it will give the mount signals to move really really fine adjustments of movement to make sure that the telescope stays in line with that star so that is the guide scope so now we've got the mount we've got the telescope we've got the camera and we've got the guide scope so the final piece of equipment now is what you're actually going to run this off and i'm using here a mini pc now it's not absolutely necessary to run a mini pc so this here is the melee uh, it's a quieter model uh, that's the model brand or make i should say um, and the reason why this is useful is because you don't need this you could run it and certainly i did when i first got when i first got the telescope just to get me up and running you could of course use a laptop the only disadvantage to that is that you need the laptop out here all night whereas i can turn the pc on and then i can sit in the comfort of my own home and i can remote desktop onto the pc so i can remote desktop onto that and use that pc from my own laptop inside the house that connects via wi-fi to my home network and i can literally run the telescope from inside my own house so the final thing that's needed is the 12 volt power supply and i'm using an old maplin 12 volt power supply there and this is coming out and it's going to a distribution board and that 12 volt distribution board has an input there from the power supply and then literally it's providing each of the plugs on either side is providing further 12 volt outputs so i'm currently running one to the mini pc uh, which is a benefit of using these this melee version it runs off 12 volts it's also got a 12 volt going out to the mount and also in theory i've not plugged it in at the moment i should have another 12 volt going out towards my camera okay so i hope that was helpful uh, that was just a little list of everything needed to get going for some deep sky imaging i think the only thing that perhaps is slightly difficult on my setup is that i've got this metal pier bolted to the ground whereas most people when they're starting off would be using a tripod uh, however it's the same example the same thing uh, just slightly different setup so i hope that was useful that was just part one showing you the equipment and then i'm going to go through stages next stage will be aligning the uh, telescope and then obviously taking it out for an evening and then processing the image thanks for watching cheers